Joined now by MSNBC political analyst David Korn, Washington Bureau Chief of Mother Jones. Amy Holmes is a political analyst with Rasmussen Reports. Hugh Hewitt, conservative radio host, MSNBC political analyst. Hugh, let's start with you. Home stretch is here. Donald Trump is down. He has trailed consistently in the national polls all summer. What is the single most important thing he has to do to get back in this game? I think you said there needs to be a shakeup. Uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Nevada are the three states where he's got the best news. I think it does come down to Pennsylvania in the end. But luckily today, and I know you're coming to this later in the program, Steve, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but on October 20th, 1973, there was a Saturday night massacre. Well, September 2nd, 2016, is a Friday night massacre of the DOJ and the FBI's narrative and reputation on Hillary Clinton and the emails. It's a disastrous <laughs> story for Hillary Clinton. And it will change the race beginning Monday. And I don't think the old Labor Day take us to yes to take us news. I think we're all going to be studying this report over the weekend. She had a terrible week. He had a very good week. That shakeup is beginning. Okay, well, you're right, uh -huh. Hugh, Hugh. We will be getting to that a little bit later in more detail. But David Korn, a, a version of the same question I asked Hugh here, I'll ask you, yeah. but from Hillary Clinton's yeah. standpoint, she's ahead. What is the biggest threat that Hillary Clinton faces in the home stretch of this campaign? Is it, is it the email story? Is it the DOJ? No. Is it something else? What is the biggest threat in your mind that could trip her up? I read the report. Other people read the report by now. It doesn't go any further than what we've already heard, that she was careless or reckless with handling the email, which she's apologized for. It's a real problem. It's a real issue. But not. I mean, she didn't know something about classified material. Donald Trump didn't know what the nuclear triad was. Okay, so, okay, so you don't think that's a threat. I'm, what is? What is? What is? I think, well, I think, the th I think the thing she needs to worry about the most is that Donald Trump becomes sane. He had a chance this week. He went to Mexico. He got kudos because he didn't drool while standing next to a foreign leader. But then he came back and gave a speech that was supposed to be part of his pivot or minority outreach. He lost, I don't know, half of his Latino advisory board. So he is not doing anything to reach those voters in the sw swing states that you just went through. So I think now she's like Muhammad Ali playing rope or dope. Just let him flail, and if he stays where he is, she's in a good position. So basically, make no mistakes, do well at the debates, which are the next possible turning point if they happen in this campaign. But really, let him go around and around like a Tasmanian devil who can't even keep his own Latino advisors aboard. Well, after a campaign meeting at Trump Tower yesterday, top aides were confident of victory following his speech Wednesday night. According to the Washington Post, Trump's tough talk on immigration combined with a whirlwind trip to Mexico on Wednesday had, in the words of one advisor, won him the election. But the New York Times reported yesterday that several associates close to Trump have told his son, Eric, that Trump is in real danger of losing. Quote, RNC strategists indicated to the younger Mr. Trump his father's already narrow path to the 270 electoral votes he needs to win could vanish going through the swing states one by one. Party officials showed Eric Trump that his father was drastically underperforming other Republicans in the polls. Amy Holmes, that's sort of a version, I think, of what we just walked through there in terms of what the state-by-state -state map looks like right now. But they mentioned that the first article we have there, the immigration speech. Mm -hmm. Trump's campaign, apparently, according to this reporting, they feel they took a big step forward mm -hmm. with the immigration speech this week. Given the, the polling realities, the swing state realities, all that he's up against, do you think he helped his cause at the end of this week by what he said this week on immigration? I think he helped his cause by that trip down to uh, Mexico. And in answer to David Korn's question, yes, Do Donald Trump looking presidential is a big threat. And even Howard Wolfson, a former communications director for Hillary, Cl for Hillary Clinton, said that Donald Trump's uh, trip to Mexico was a home run. Now, the media is analyzing Donald Trump's speech in Phoenix in very different ways. I watched it and I heard a tough tone, but in fact, in terms of substance, I thought that he was actually kind of, you know, straying the, the middle of the, the road and the middle line there. And many of the things that he outlined are, in fact, U.S. policy and an administration policy. I understand that the, the speech was fiery, but I think a lot of voters listening, they, they like that message from Donald Trump that he's going to be putting America first. And I would be surprised if Hillary Clinton disagrees with that. Well, let's stay on that for a second, Hugh Hewitt, because it's interesting 
interesting. We talk about the, the tone of the speech and the emphasis Donald Trump had there uh, on crime. He had the, the parents of, of victims of, uh, of crimes that had been committed by illegal immigrants. I'm looking just when I, when I sort of slice and dice the demographics here, trying to figure out why Clinton's winning, why Trump's losing. And I'm not the only one to, to look at this, but it, it comes down to these white suburbanites. It comes down to people who are a little bit more conservative economically, pocketbook issues. They worry about their taxes, but they don't like the idea of, of being associated with somebody who says the inflammatory things Donald Trump has. And I'm, I'm just looking at the tone of that speech this week, and, and I'm having a hard time seeing how those voters warm up to him because of it. Well, it depends if they listen to it or to the coverage. I was on with you on Wednesday night, Steve, and I, uh, I agree that I thought it was a, a very energetic speech, but comprehensively in the middle of the Republican position on immigration. And going back to your, I think, very, uh, a very completely accurate assessment of the map, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nevada are where Donald Trump has to shake the map up. How does the... How does the speech play in those three states and in Pennsylvania? I think it plays very, very well. It's not going to get you back Colorado. That's gone. I, you know, I think it's a completely blue state right now. It, Nevada's a funny state because of Trump's presence there. But how does it play in Iowa, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin? Uh, he promises security to a country worried about security. He elevates for the media to understand the victims of crime of those not in the country legally. And he does so with a little bit more humor and grace than we're used to and especially the visit to Mexico. It was his very best day of the campaign in the middle of a week where Hillary Clinton began with Gilbert Shiguri on the front page of the Los Angeles Times, ended up with this terrible report today. So I think by this time next week, we'll see a much tighter race. All right, so some senators this week, meanwhile, sounded like they believe a Hillary Clinton win is in the cards for November. Senator John McCain, who won his primary in Arizona on Tuesday night, is now using the prospect of a Clinton presidency in a new TV ad. Check, check it out. But if Hillary Clinton is elected president, Arizona will need a senator who will act as a check, not a rubber stamp, for the White House. And Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy said on C-SPAN last night that it's not the Republican message that's at fault, but the messenger at the top of the ticket. The message that we have is pretty good. It may turn out that Mr. Trump is not the messenger. Now, maybe he is. But it really seems to boil down to Mr. Trump's personality being not what people like as opposed to some of the issues. I think where the issues are, the Republicans are kind of where many of the American people are. Well, Amy, that McCain ad, I, I, it just takes me back 1996 when the Republicans concluded Bob Dole was, was toast in the presidential race. They wanted to save the Congress. They started campaigning saying, hey, give us a check against a second term of President Clinton. Seeing shades of that right now in that ad. Well, I think that ad has a lot more to do with John McCain being in a tough reelection battle, and he's trying to appeal to the, the moderates, his moderates in Arizona. But you also always have to ask the question in politics compared to what? We're talking about Donald Trump and uh, his tone or his demeanor. Well, Hillary Clinton this week, it was reported by the Washington Post, is at her highest negativities and unfavorability in her career. And the bad news that has come out uh, over last week and this week, including the Clinton Foundation and the revelations by the AP that half of the people that she met with who were outside of government came were donors to the Clinton Foundation. This has not been good for her. And I would actually say that that's that very fiery speech that she gave attacking Donald Donald Trump and Donald Trump voters, I thought that that was a sign of weakness. Typically, the top of the ticket, they're, they're the good cop. And the vice presidential candidate, they're the bad cop who, who slings the mud. Well, Hillary Clinton was willing to sling that mud because I think she's afraid of Donald Trump. She's trying to frame him as unacceptable and is afraid that his message is getting through. And, and David Korn, just very quickly on that. I mean, this is a story we've been talking about, I'd say, 96 since the 90s. Hillary Clinton, those high negative numbers, those high unfavorable yeah. numbers. I mean, are we at a point, though, where we have to say whatever happens in this election, she may still win. That problem for her in particular is just unfixable? It may be, but her negative numbers, as high as they are, are still lower than Donald Trump's. And I still can't get over how anybody can look at his speech, which drove his own Latino advisors out of the campaign, kicking, you know, screaming and running as something that would play well with his with the general electorate and, get, and, and put him in a better position. It's ludicrous to think that he gained when he lost his own supporters. So I think there's a long way to go before Donald Trump shows any of those voters that you talked about, Steve, those suburban Republicans and moderates, that he's a guy with the temperament, the knowledge, or the ability to talk in a way that doesn't cause them to pull their hair out of their head.
All right, David Korn, Amy Holmes, Hugh Hewitt, thanks for the time. Appreciate it.